Hello Geminis, welcome to your tarot reading. So once again, I am using the 12 houses of the NATO astrology chart and I'm going to go, in, um, I selected a card for each sector of your uh, life right now just to see what's going on with you. If there are trouble spots, uh, hopefully we're able to, you know, flush some of these things out and see if there is a way, like an outlet, a way for you to overcome these challenges, okay? So let's go into your first house. And the first house basically deals with, you know, the face that you project, uh, that you show to the world, the way that other people perceive you, the way they view you, as well as um, the energy that you bring to the table um, for this month. So the first house here, uh, we have the five of pentacles in the reverse position. And the five of pentacles in the reverse position, this is a, a card about, you know, um, financial bankruptcy, financial uh, hardships, and also spiritual bankruptcy and spiritual hardships. When it comes up in the re upright position, or I'm sorry, the reverse position, it basically denotes overcoming all of these life's challenges, overcoming major, major karmic lessons, and overcoming um, past as well, emotional, uh, emotional as well as financial challenges in order to get where you are today. So whatever troubles that have been plaguing you through 2016, and especially, you know, last month as well in January, I feel that there is kind of like this break in the atmosphere where you're able to emerge from it and you're able to find some refuge, find some help, find some assistance. And you're, you're coming into this month in a spirit of like, um, rebuilding your self-esteem okay so whatever was broken down last month in january you're slowly rebuilding your self-esteem you're rebuilding your sense of self-confidence and i feel that you are slowly emerging from these difficulties in the past it seems like you went through a, a very karmic f uh, phase in the past and i would say like the past five years even so um this is a good card overall especially in the reverse position okay um, in terms of your second house, the second house deals with finances. It deals with uh, how you make money as well as values. So let's talk about your financial situation. This is like a lot of hard work that is required in order to move things along. A lot of things that are going to be on the table, a lot of projects that you need to handle. And it seems as if, you know, you're, you're inundated with a lot of responsibilities, kind of like taking on the weight of the world on your shoulders. So this is a month um, just to be prepared for it. There is going to be a major sense of a time crunch, okay? And Gemini's, you tend to be a little bit more scattered with your time and your energy. So just be careful that you, you know, um, set down a, a more rigid work schedule for yourself. Don't procrastinate. Don't leave things to the last minute because I feel like this is a, a burdensome card. It basically means a lot of things will be coming your way unexpectedly and a lot of unexpected detours, last minute um, amendments that you're going to need to make, as well as just overall this sense of like having a lot of work on your table. Okay, so just um, keep that in mind. Make sure you don't leave things to the last minute because there's a major time crunch the 10th of the month as well as the end of the month, okay? So keep that in mind. In terms of your values as well, with the 10 of wands, what it basically means is that I feel like this is a card about, you know, um, trudging ahead in a difficult manner, okay? So people might not agree with what you're doing and might not agree with your system, might not agree with your ethics or even your values, whatever you consider to be your innate uh, values. But I feel like you are you know, drudging on, your shoulder soldiering on despite the opposition. And both of these cards confirm to me that, you know, no matter what, you've got somebody on your side that will really, um, uh, that believes in you this, despite the opposition. So in terms of your communication style, there is a little bit of a warning here that we need to be careful about, okay? Um, we have here the King of Pentacles in the reverse position. So this is somebody in the upright position. This is somebody that is very, very, um, I, I want to say like deliberate with their speech. Okay. They make sure that they have facts and figures. They make sure that everything they say um, can be fact checked. They make sure that everything they come to the table with, everything that they bring to the table with 
is secure and sound as it relates to your communication for this month. This is an, uh, something you want to be very careful about, okay? So status and prestige is greatly linked up with this person, all right? So you might be dealing with this person heavily, and I do feel like whatever ideas you bounce off of this person, this being an earth sign Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, uh, whatever you bounce ideas off this person, I feel like you want to make sure that they give you constructive feedback and honest feedback because I feel like they might not want to hurt your feelings. They might not want to, um, um, you know, like cause a, a rift or cause strife within the relationship or the interaction. So they might not give you the whole truth, but you want to be a little bit careful when it comes to communication overall. As it relates to your personal communication, this is a card about, you know, shooting off at the hips, um, maybe expressing yourself in a way where not all the facts are clear. So you want to be really, really careful about, you know, um, representing yourself in a way that is tempered, that is deliberate, that is accurate. Um, also in the reverse position, I feel like, you know, public image, sense of uh, self-esteem, sense of self uh, prestige can also be undermined by the way we communicate. So just be careful. It's heavily linked up with this um, five of pentacles energy. So I feel like, you know, maybe lessons being repeated, but I do sense you want to be extremely careful with your communication with this card. Okay. Um, in terms of your uh, fourth house, which deals with, you know, family. Uh, the family you grew up in, the family that you hope to create for yourself, the family you, that you have established right now, as well as the mother figure. And I'm going to, I'm not going to touch too heavily unless the energy um, calls out to touch on, you know, mother, father. I'm just going to talk about the family situation. We have here the eight of swords, and this is a card about feeling a little bit stuck. Okay. Feeling as if uh, we are a little bit stifled, feeling almost as if the environment is not entirely comfortable for whatever reason, okay? So um, in the mundane sense, it can denote a situation where you might, you know, be, um, some of you might have experienced some health issues and your mobility is going to be restricted somehow. There might be issues with like cars, um, you know, like um, transportation cars waiting on other people in order to um, go places. So I feel like there is a lot of uh, wait time. There's a lot of like, I see people waiting for, for their cars, waiting for buses, waiting for drivers, waiting on, on people in order to um, move about. So I feel like you are home relatively like, uh, 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 well, actually a lot more than you would be other months. And I feel as well that the home environment, it's not in entirely stifling, but it just feels as if your sense of timing is uh, dependent upon something else, something external to you. So it's like you're not entirely free to move about. You're not entirely free to act. And you're not entirely like at all at ease, even within your home environment, which is supposed to be your haven, your comfort zone. So there's a, a sense of like feeling ill at ease. Okay. Um, as it relates to, you know, family uh, dynamics overall, the Eight of Swords is kind of like knowing where we stand with other people. So this is like stuck energy. When it shows up in the reverse, it's kind of like all the swords are lifted. All the restrictions are lifted within your interpersonal relationship. So you know where you stand with people. Other people know where they stand with you. I do feel like some of you might have some quarrels with siblings. If you are living in close proximity to them, even though, you know, you might live like literally next door, there's some type of an emotional uh, rift. And I also feel like a values difference, like a differences in values where you both can't really see eye to eye. So you choose not to see each other on a uh, regular basis. So there is a uh, heavy energy here regarding, you know, uh, needing to, to fix some relationships as it pertains to siblings. And for those of you who do not have siblings, like you're, if you're the only child, you don't have a, you, you didn't grow up in a blended family. Basically what it means is that, you know, focusing on communication so that you don't isolate the people around you. So there's something here. Um, I feel like this might be a little bit of a sore spot for this month. So it's just, it's just better to take care of them, uh, as they come up. Okay. Um, six house. I'm sorry, this is the fifth house. The fifth, fifth house deals with recreation, fun, creativity, okay? Things that you do for personal enjoyment, things that you enjoy uh, doing. 
and the people as well that you are associating with when you are um, doing these creative things to entertain yourself. So, for example, if you like to go out, you know, just drinking or even uh, dining concerts, these are the people that you are interacting with. We have here the three of cups in the reverse, and this is not um, usually like a, a positive card showing up in the reverse position because it indicates a lot of gossip, a lot of like he said, she said, a lot of drama that is brewing within your social circle that you want to remove yourself from. And additionally, it indicates kind of like feeling almost as if you don't really fit in somewhere and that's not always a bad thing, you know, it, it's like if you don't fit in with a specific group, it might not be the right people for you to associate yourself with to begin with. So I feel like there is a, a sense of like kind of like feeling like cast out in the cold, feeling almost as if you're too different from other people and so you don't really fit in and uh, feeling kind of like out of place, out of sorts. So there's some challenges as well when it comes to your um, your your friendships, okay? And as it relates to like creative activities with the three of cups, the, th the, the cups energy usually cr indicates something creative that we enjoy doing as a pastime or as an outlet. And I just feel like, you know, with your um, work house so heavily, heavily aspected, um, it seems almost as if you're not going to have free time to go out and socialize. And I do sense because of it, you might feel this emotional disconnect um, from the people that are um, that you normally associate with so you're busy you might not even have the time to you know really go out and socialize there might even be some type of a geographical distance uh geographical like um, um I, I feel like you might not be close to them in proximity to allow you to you know socialize with them now in terms of your sixth house this basically deals with work as well as um, your health, as well as your daily routine, okay? Let's talk about your daily routine. The Eight of Cups in the reverse, I'm sorry, in the upright position. Sorry for the um, the slip. I've been doing this all night with your video, so I apologize. Um, the Eight of Cups in the upright position basically indicates a situation that we have devoted a lot of energy, a lot of time in and we're not going to be able to go through with it so you know it's, it's like walking away from a project or something that you've devoted a lot of time in so as it relates to your um your regular routine i do feel that there is a major major switcheroo when it comes to your schedule when it comes to your everyday routine when it comes to your everyday planning so if you had a calendar and you had like a planner and you had like, you know, certain activities that needs to be done. I feel like there is a drastic, major, major transformation within your daily routine. Whatever you used to do for leisure activity, for fun recreation, you're not going to be able to do these things this much this month. And I feel mainly it's because work is putting a little bit of a dampen energy on your uh, routine. OK, uh, in terms of health. Be very, very careful. I do see a lot of like um, late nights, a lot of caffeine consumption, a lot of um, I do sense as well um, alcohol consumption, like, you know, taking a nightcap, for example, to help you sleep because you're past that point of exhaustion. I feel a lot of you are staying up very, very, very late at night. And so, you know, just take care of yourself, get a lot of water, get uh, plenty of liquids and, you know, try to flush out toxins as well is what I'm sensing. Um, I do see like knee joints injuries as well. So just be very careful when you are walking. Um, don't over exert yourself and, you know, at the gym, like I do see water retentions, knee issues, water retention. Okay. Um, let me see. The last thing that I haven't touched upon is your work situation and your work situation, whatever you have invested yourself in, you know, the past eight months, the past eight years. Uh, whatever you have built up from the ground up and you are emotionally very, very much invested in, I feel like you're going to have to walk away from it and seek something new. That's what it's saying here with this card. Now, in terms of your relationship sector, we do have a little bit of a mixed bag card and um, there are a lot of messages that comes through. Usually with major arcana cards, there are quite a few messages that come through. Um, seventh house deals with work partnerships as well as business partnerships and romantic partnerships okay let's talk about romance first of all 
uh, we have the world in the reverse position. And the world in a reverse position as it relates to a romantic partner and the type of partner that is in your life. Some of you are involved with this person and the world usually indicates, you know, differences like culturally, linguistically, ethnically, as well as uh, values, as um, values. And so if it's in the reverse position, it basically means, you know, there are going to be some obstacles and barriers in terms of how you communicate with each other, how you show affection, how you show love, and whether or not you're able to agree eye to eye on with um, very, you know, like on the mundane level, whether or not you are compatible. So I do see a little bit of um, lack of compatibility overall. The world usually indicates a very lustful energy. So it basically means being very um, physically attracted to somebody. You know, the chemistry is quite strong. But whether or not it's compatible, that's another story here. Because there might be um, geographical distance. There might be cultural divide. There might be too many different um, ideas between, you know, like, like ways of doing, ways of uh, behaving, ways of uh, being that you have with your uh, current relationship partner that makes it hard for you both to form a stable, uh, secure relationship. So there's something like that coming through. In terms of work partnerships, I do feel like um, some of you are thinking, if, if, you, if you have a uh, business partnership with somebody, they might be somebody that is that hails from overseas. They might be at a distance from you. You might be dealing with them heavily. Uh, like, you know, you're you're on one time zone, they're on the next. And I feel like um, communicating with each other might require you or the other person to stay up very late at night because of time differences. And um, with the world in the reverse position, it usually indicates to me some type of uh, publishing too. So for those of you who have recently, you know, sought a publisher in order to uh, link up with them, they would be the financier, you would do the project. I feel that there are some delays when it comes to the creative fields, uh, work in the creative fields as well as business partnerships as it relates to like publishing, marketing, advertising, okay? Um, let me see, lastly, I do sense as well, they're, they're saying here, there, there has been some type of business deals that needs to be revisited mainly because I feel I feel almost as if um, things were not things were not wrapped up correctly. Okay, so this is kind of like the end of a cycle. When it shows up in the reverse, it basically means you know things need to be revisited because they were not wrapped up properly. Um, eighth house deals with joint finances, and we have here the page of pentacles. So some of you might literally um, have your assets linked up with another person that is an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. For some of you, it might be a sibling. For some of you, um, I do have here the King of Pentacles as well as the Page. This usually indicates like family too. We have a lot of family generational cards here. So um, financial resources linked up with family, linked up as well with siblings, linked up with this specific earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This person is uh, what I call the apprentice, okay? This is somebody like, um, they're, they don't know everything they're supposed to do just yet. They're still in the preliminary training stages and they're still trying to, you know, figure out their skills. They're trying to figure out their weaknesses and they're trying to learn the ropes. They are generally very, very reliable, but you still need to keep a little bit of a, a you know, one eye on them um, because I feel like they get distracted easily. So this is somebody that you're dealing with. And on the um, more, I guess, like on the more negative aspect of it, it can be somebody who is a little bit more frivolous with money. And it's somebody that um, that likes shiny objects is, is what I'm sensing, like attention problems, shiny objects. OK, uh, let me see if there's anything else coming through with this card here. What they're saying here, you know, like the eighth house is traditionally a psychic house and it also deals with sex, death, regeneration. I feel like the way that you're making money is going to be transformed drastically this year. 
uh, and I'm sorry, this month, in the month of February. So there's something here about, you know, a new situation emerging. If you have recently walked away from a, a job, you're starting something else, and, and it seems like you're a little bit underpaid, okay? So you're starting something brand new, and it seems almost as if you have to work from the ground up in order to build up your foundation all over again. That's what it feels like to me. Um, ninth house deals with education. And um, this is also another, a little bit of a sore spot for you guys. So I'm going to look at the ninth house and the 10th house together because this is education and this is the career path. Um, with the Hierophant in the reverse position, I feel like some of you, um, I, I'm, I'm sensing like there is a little bit of regrets associated with this card. It's almost as if your parents told you, you know, Stay in school, uh, make sure you graduate from college, make sure you get those straight A's. And then in your youth, you might have been like, what's the point? You know, some people dropped out of school and they, they got really, really good jobs. And I feel like sometime for this month, you're going to realize the importance of education. You're going to realize that my parents were right. And you're going to realize as well that, um, you know, like a, a lot of the times, some people don't graduate from college for whatever reason. They might have gone to school and then dropped out um, of their own volition, or there might have not have been enough financial resources. And I feel like the majority of people that that has happened to, they do walk around with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. And they feel almost as if, man, I wish I had the money to go to school. And then others, they feel uh, almost as if I'm not smart enough. So this is the card that comes through to let you know that Sometimes people learn in different ways. The traditional method of learning might not be great for everybody. So don't judge your own sense of self-worth, whether or not you finish school, whether or not your friends have finished school and you feel like you're behind. So don't let, you know, this traditional method of learning be something that dictates your whether or not you're smart, whether or not you are deserving, whether or not, you know, like just don't let it affect your self-worth, okay? Because it's the traditional method is not it's not um, applicable and it's not effective for everybody. Um, I mentioned earlier that, you know, you, you, you are uh, a little bit scattered this month. I feel like mentally, because you have so much going on right now in terms of work, that I feel, I feel some of you are thinking about, you know, um, possibly returning to school, possibly like um, you, it feels almost as if you feel that um, school would have been helpful because there are a lot of things right now that are on your plate, on your table that you might not know how to deal with. And so I feel like there's a little bit of uh, information here about those of you who want to return back to school, if you have started and didn't finish it, find a way to do it, okay? It's going to be really beneficial for you, not only to repair your self-esteem, but I feel like it's going to be beneficial on the job front as well, on the work front. And in terms of like travel and things like that, um, so this, the ninth house also rules long distance travel. With the Hierophant in the reverse position, I do sense as well that um, some of you might be in a position where, you know, the, the responsibilities of the household might limit your ability to travel overall. This is a, a family card. This is an institutional card. Responsibilities on the institutional front, on the family front, might really limit your ability to travel. And um, I do see a lot of dealings with foreigners for this month. But I feel like there might have been some challenges associated with, you know, not being able to see eye to eye because of cultural differences. So I feel like that might also be restricting your ability to travel. Just, you know, how you innately feel about a, certain, a specific culture, how you innately feel about a specific place. So you're, feel, you're, you're choosing travel locations based on this innate um, intuition about where you should move to. So I hope that makes sense. The 10th house deals with your career and, you know, career is long term, whereas work is uh, temporary and it's for more for survival. Career is more for aspirations, our dreams, wishes and our place in the world. So we have here the four of pentacles and the four of pentacles is shown up in the reverse position. Um, when it shows up in the reverse position, it's almost as if you are dropping something that you have held on to for a very, very long time. You are dropping something that you really, really believed in, okay? And um, when it shows up in the reverse position like this, 
I feel like in terms of your career, whatever you thought, whatever your career track is right now, I feel like it's not ex it's not meeting your expectations. And so you're going to feel sometime for this month that the responsibilities might be too much. The people that you're dealing with in this work environment possibly as well. Um, they the people that you you like they might have moved away and i do sense as well that you know it's it's like reality and expectations it, it feels almost as if your career track if you're in your career track right now you might feel like it's not really living up to its full potential and at the same time there might be a lot of responsibility so you don't really know how to triage how to you know prioritize so that's going to be something very very important for you okay um, this is a card about, you know, being a little bit um, stubborn as well, being a little bit too uh, guarded as well, like not emotionally open. In terms of your career, they're telling you to be a little bit more open-minded, to be a little bit more, um, I want to say like, don't, uh, so it, it's sort of like some people seek a career, for example, for the prestige, even for the financial stability, or even for, you know, that uh, the status. So whatever the expectation is or whatever the, the, the purpose or your motives are when it comes to uh, seeking a specific career, I feel like you're going to have to once again do a 180 and figure out if it's really something that's making you happy. OK, so we have a lot of things here that needs to be reexamined is what I'm sensing. Um, let me see. This is the 11th house group associations as well as uh, friendships. So. Ten of Pentacles is basically indicative of um, this is kind of like a, a crowded environment, okay? And it's um, it's a crowded environment in a way where too many things are happening, and it's a little bit clutter. There are too many people, and you you can't really hear yourself think. So I feel like you're going to be in uh, in a group setting with a lot of people, and I also feel as if you know financial transactions even or status and prestige and all of these things really mean a lot to them, but they might not mean a lot to you. So you might be dealing with people who asked you, you know, like in, in, in your friendship circle, even they're like, um, how much do you make a year? What do you do for a living? You know, where do you stand? Like, do you own this property and what car do you drive? So this sense of overwhelming, like, um, materialism is, is also coming through in the people that you are interacting with. And at the same time, this is something that is, you know, built up over time, like friendships, group associations, um, relationships that are built up over many, many years, over many, many months. And when it shows up in the reverse positions, you're going to start to see these long-standing relationships are starting to unravel for whatever reason. Okay. And I do sense overall you're going, you're coming into this month with, uh, with a, a sense of renewed sense of uh, confidence and empowerment. But I feel like the, the, the circle that you associate with, first of all, there's a little bit of gossip. And then secondly, there is a little bit of like, um, things starting to unravel, you know? And so I do sense that you're going to have to do some major reassessment when it comes to friendships, as well as how you entertain yourself the things that you do for recreation, because it seems almost as if it's in misalignment with other people that you hang out with. Okay. So it, it's really important to keep these things under wraps. The 12th house is a house of secrets. It's a house of institutions. And, um, we have here the page of swords in the reverse position. I'm actually going to pull out another card for you guys, just to clarify. But, um, what I want to say is this, I usually look at the 12th house and because it's a very strong psychic house, it deals with things in our environment that we're kind of um, clueless about. And it could also deals with things that we are purposely either hiding or holding back on. Okay. The eighth house is also a very psychic house. And um, I'm going to look at these things in conjunction. So I feel as if you are associated with a, a person so i'm going to read this energy as you this is the page of swords in the reverse position this is somebody that um i feel like they 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 want to seek the truth okay but the way that they go about seeking the truth might be considered a little bit sneaky or a little bit underhanded 
So for example, um, you know, like if you, you have a crush, for example, and you want to know more information about them, you might do some, you know, heavy, heavy, heavy social media stalking. And then others of you, you might find like other underhanded ways to get to know, to, to retrieve your information in ways that, um, that might be considered ingenious or it might be considered sneaky depending on who, who you're dealing with. And um, I feel like you're dealing with this person. It's almost as if you're trying to figure out this person. And this is shown up here as a um, as an earth sign. So Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. And I feel almost as if you're there. They seem very trustworthy. So it could be some of you are in, involved with this person in some way, maybe sharing finances together. And it seems almost as if you have some things that you're keeping back, you're holding back. You might not want to tell them how, um, you might not want to tell them everything for whatever reason, but I feel like there is something here that you are keeping hidden and because you're keeping it hidden, I feel like you are aware of it, right? So you might also be, it seems almost as if, you know, digging to see if there has been other uh, relationships that are happening concurrently. Um, I, I use these three cards to clarify the page of swords. So this is a relationship. Okay. So possibly hiding, um, other partners or hiding other love interests. And I feel like, you know, you are thinking about coming clean. I feel like some of you are, are you're, you're wanting to be honorable. And I feel that, um, you're, you're grappling with some, some deep personal things here, whether or not you should come clean. And I do feel that you're you, uh, by in the process of coming clean, you're going to have to really re-examine whether or not this person is going to be still on your side or whether or not they're going to work elsewhere. Okay, so I feel like that's what's happening in this general spread. So I'm going to go into your love reading. I feel like some of you are really, really holding yourself back. So it feels almost as if, even if you have a, a, a new relationship partner that you really, really like, right? I feel like you're, you're scared to jump all the way in. You're scared to invest 100%. So it's still like one foot out the door. And I feel like you want them to meet you halfway. So it's almost like, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to rush right in and give them everything. I'm going to hold back and, and make sure they meet me halfway. So there is a hesitancy about you as it re, uh, relates to your love relationships. There's also the sense of like, um, not entirely sure if you, you know, like on the one hand, you know, your intuition, our intuition always tells us, you know, whether or not somebody is trustworthy, but I feel almost as if you don't know for sure. And you want something for sure before you can invest 100%. So I feel like a lot of you are very cautious when it comes to relationships for this month. Okay, let's see. Love relationships for Gemini, February 2017. Okay, so let me just talk about the crowning energy first. The crowning energy is something that you are thinking about, things that are weighing heavily on your mind, okay? So we think of this as like the head and you know, this is like the consciousness. This is something that's already in the picture. So that's how I usually um, interpret, you know, this spread. So the, the crowning energy is something that you're thinking about heavily. We have here the hangman in the reverse position. This is kind of like coming out of a very, very uncomfortable situation in order to start anew. This is like um, if you have been waiting on resolution from another person, you're no longer waiting. Decisions have been reached and you're slowly, slowing, slowly like um, getting off the floor or getting off the chair in order to jumpstart new things. OK, so you're you're you were stuck in limbo waiting on somebody or something. And you might have been in a situations where you were weighing out the pros and cons. Do I stay or do I go or what do I do in this specific situation? And we have here the chariot in the reverse position. Um, first of all, in the mundane sense, it could deal with physically traveling to see somebody. I feel a lot of you might be um, seeing somebody from a distance. A lot of you might be uh, dating somebody who is racially, culturally, linguistically different from you. So there is that um, dilemma as well. 
you know, like uh, things get lost in translation. So a lot of the times our feelings can't really be expressed if we don't have a common tongue. So I feel like that might have been a challenge. It's sort of like, you know, this back and forth that's happening between you and another person. And even though they say one thing, you say another thing, it, it feels almost as if some things were lost in translation. It's almost as if you couldn't really understand 100%. And so you weren't really sure 100% how they feel. You weren't really sure. Like, you know how you feel about them. And I feel like you weren't ready to invest 100%. You were waiting on them. And so something happened for this month or is going to happen for this month in February where you're going to know if you can proceed ahead. You're going to know if like if these barriers, these differences between us, if they're too strong, are we, you know, going to last or are we just going to stop the relationship from happening altogether? So with the chariot in the reverse position, it basically indicates some type of a stoppage, some type of a pause. Whatever was accelerated in the past, I feel like you're weighing out the pros and cons to figure out if it's worth pursuing because two people, two entities are too different from each other. And because of it, they can't work together as a unit. So I feel like you're dealing with somebody that you are very, very attracted to. But in terms of like being able to work together in a relationship or together as a unit, it might have been quite challenging. Okay, um, Coming in in your past position, and this is something that you have left behind in the past. We have here the Ten of Cups in the re uh, reversed, as well as the Five of Cups in the, re in the reverse as well. So the Ten of Cups... Yeah, this is the Ten of Cups in the reverse position. So this is a situation that is usually indicative of like a family. You know, two people met, uh, got together, joined together in some type of a union, some type of a matrimony. You might have lived together with this person or you might have been married to this person. When it shows up in the reverse position, it's kind of like a situation where you're happily, uh, you're unhappily staying together or you have recently divorced and you know this person is no longer in your life and even though this person is no longer in your life there's still a sense of sadness a sense of regret a sense of like nostalgia for the past it's not coming in so strongly but i do feel that it's still something you know you have gemini's have very very sentimental ties and when you love it's almost like you're born looking for your other half so when you find somebody that you have this ten of cups this apex of the emotional experience with it's really hard to to you know overcome it and it's really hard to let them go even though it's in your best interest because i feel like the love has run out in that relationship there's still that sense of nostalgia um you know self-doubt did i do the right thing so i feel like a lot of you have recently disbanded a union with another person and which brings us to the present situation we have here the three of coins in the reverse and the three of coins in the reverse is a situation where, you know, there's a breakdown in communication, breakdown in the union and breakdown in the financial entanglement as well. So if you have recently decided, OK, let's get separated or let's get divorced. This is kind of like the, the, the stage where you both are sitting down with a lawyer and you're trying to decide um, who owns what, who gets what and how assets are divided between people. Um, it's not a card about cooperation, so there might still be a little bit of strife lingering in your life. And I also feel like some of you might have transitioned um, into a new relationship while you were dealing with the separation of this relationship, while you were trying to extract yourself, while you were trying what to decide what to do. And now that the you know divorce is over, then you're thinking about moving ahead with the new person. And it's also linked up here with the four of wands, which basically means, you know, it's a breakdown in some type of family unit, something that you built together with another person. Now things are being liquidated. Two people are trying to go their separate ways, as well as um, people deciding to, you know, split assets. So it's corroborating the same thing pretty much. And I feel like, I feel like, you know, I I'm sensing there's a lot of cultural or even like um, just innate incompatibilities between people. You might have loved the other person, you know, very much. 
but for whatever reason there were just difficulties in navigating each other you know like um it's like it, i i feel like long distance and then i also see see like a, a cultural linguistic ling, um cultural linguistic spatial divide and um i feel like the challenges in the relationship was that innately you both were not compatible and also career wise you both have wanted different things it, it seems like to me so it feels like you know there once was a lot of love involved and that's why you're still nostalgic for the past and so in the foundation here the foundation is something that you know to be true this is a relationship that's lacking in um common goals common purpose you both are not agree in agreement when it comes to you know who does what and when it comes to like um working together as a unit having a common goal having a common um ambition and a common purpose so there's a lot of incompatibility piled up and i feel like it's uh it made the relationship feel a little bit like um uh an obligation it made the relationship feels almost burdensome in in whatever way and uh with the sun in the reverse position it's almost like somebody's ego got in the way okay somebody's ego like uh greatly affected the relationship and as a result the relationship was all about one person rather than as um uh, than being about two <clears throat> two people wanting to work towards like a common goal so i feel like there has been a situation where somebody overpowers somebody else that's what it seems like and um it's linked up as well with the seven of cups in the reverse so i feel like this um within this past relationship it seems as if you know like um ideals versus like expectations right like um i i'm almost sensing it's like when you meet somebody new and you know you you put them on a pedestal and with the seven of cups it's a card about you know um idealism when it shows up in the reverse it's kind of like these fantasies are falling down like they're 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 basically fantasies being brought to reality fantasies being brought to a realistic focus and you're starting to see the person for who they are and then you might realize that they were all about themselves you know they were all about them and they didn't care about the relationship as a unit so i feel like there might have been some ego struggles like a power play at hand here and that made the relationship very difficult um in terms of what's coming through in your um future we have some really good cards here we have here the 2 of cups and the 2 of cups is basically a very very uh a new person that is a almost like a very strong uh kindred spirit to you okay so i feel for some of you there might be some travels to see somebody that that meets this criteria where you know you don't have to communicate with them you just look at them from across the room and they get you and i feel like whatever um whatever communications you've had whatever incompatibilities you've had with a past person i feel like you are meeting somebody new and you're going to be able to like uh non-verbally explain yourself in a way where both parties just innately understand each other without having a lot of like back and forth without having to over explain they just get it and it's linked up here with the 9 of swords and the 9 of swords is like this is what i feel um this is a card about restless nights and when it's linked up with a positive card it means staying up really really late at night in order to talk to your partner in order to communicate if you're at a distance it means text messaging it means constantly you know like um sacrificing sleep in order to be with your partner so that's what it seems like and then i see for some of you this is um not going to apply to all but i feel for some of you gemini's it it feels almost as if you're you have a stable relationship possibly a marriage and there's somebody that you're meeting that you feel a kindred connection with and you're not really sure what to do okay there is a little bit of guilt usually associated with this nine of swords it's kind of like worries anxiety excitement guilt all mixed together and it's 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 um it can be emotionally and mentally taxing on you so i feel like that's what's happening here for those of you who are single 
I feel like you need to get out and about in a、uh, situation where you're going to be like I, I see debates, debate clubs, chess clubs. I feel like areas where there's a lot of、uh, information exchange between people who are really intelligent, and I feel like you you might be called on the spot to do something. I feel like if you you put yourself in that environment for this month. There's going to be、um, a, a chance encounter here with a very, very special person that can, you know, that that sees eye to eye with you. Okay, for those who are single, putting yourself out there in that capacity, I feel like it's going to be very beneficial. And once again, we have here the the social dating card. This is kind of like the Match.com. This is going online, looking at people's profiles and、uh, pictures. When it shows up in the reverse, it seems almost as if you've narrowed down some choices. And so I feel like you you have the potential here to to be with somebody that can be、um, a, a really good relationship partner for you, okay? And for those of you who are in coupled relationships, I do see a little bit of ego conflict coming through within marriages and within stable relationships. Work life interfering, work life interfering with your relationships, okay? So that means if you're overworking. You or your partner overworking and not prioritizing the relationship, I feel like it's going to leave room for temptation outside of the relationship, either with like other coworkers because I see that with this card here, Three of Pentacles,、uh, temptation in the work environment, and I feel like because of that, it might destabilize your current relationship if you are neglectful of it. Okay. And then for others of you, I feel like you are trying to meet the the right person. You've met somebody that is showing interest in you. You have either left a really long-standing relationship behind or a marriage behind, and I feel like you're coming into in,、um, opportunities with like making new friends. And I feel like you want to keep it in the friend zone because you're not ready. But I feel like the other person might be pushing for more. So I feel like. If you're dealing with, if you want to keep things a little bit more platonic, but the other person is pushing for more, you might be dealing here with、um, a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, and、uh, Sun, Moon, or Rising. But I feel like this person is very, very caring. They have a really good heart. They want to get married. They want to have a family, and they want like you know the whole traditional courtship. They're they're very they're saying like very traditional. So I feel like they 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 see a lot of potential in you to be the one, and I feel like you're hesitant because you've been out of some bad relationships, and、um, I do sense that you're trying to you know take it slow, but it feels almost as if they're rushing you. So I feel like you're putting a stop to it or you're slowing it down, but it seems like they're rushing. Okay, I'm getting somebody who's very amorous, like somebody who. Who wants to like touch you all the time? And I feel like you know, as an air sign,、um, you might not want that all the time. You know, air signs are not like、um, innately sensual types of people. And I feel like too much togetherness, too much of that clingy energy. I feel like it can、um, it it can turn you off. You know, from a specific person, even though you like them perfectly fine, but I feel like it's a little bit too much. I feel you're a little bit claustrophobic by this person.、Uh, I feel like they mean well, and it can work out. And I feel like you know, there's this sense of a, a very strong soul connection, like a, a soulmate connection, soul connection. And then others of you, whatever relationship problems you've had, I feel like you know, you, your partner is going to show you that they are there for you and they're committed. And that you know, no matter what gossip is coming through, I feel like they're going to prove to you that they don't really care. They're overlooking it because they trust you. So I feel like、uh, a lot of good gestures coming through for those of you in solid relationships. A lot of strife, but also a lot of good gestures to reignite the trust and the passion and the 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 faith in the relationship overall. So、um, for those of you who have you know dealt with somebody in the past, especially a、uh, water sign. Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. I feel like there was a lot of time and a lot of love invested. And every once in a while, you have that sense of nostalgia about that past person. But I feel like you're trying to move forward, and you have some good things moving forward. You have some good、um, new prospects coming through for you in the future. Okay.、Um, so I hope the reading has been helpful for you, Gemini's.、Um, I wish you the best for this month. I'm going to be back for the mid-month reading. 
And uh, I'll talk to you then, okay? And take care of yourself. Bye-bye.